Okay, it's um, 5.47, so I'm going to go ahead and call this special meeting of the Board of Finance to order. Um, Mike Malloy is not here yet, so if he's not, if he doesn't come before our first vote, Jeff Clark will be voting for Mike. Okay. Um, I didn't hear from Mike, so maybe he will be in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, as we get started, I just want to thank especially the Board of Education members and the super, interim superintendent for, for coming to, to listen to Mike, and I thank the, the auditor for coming this evening. Um, we just have one, hopefully, relatively quick item on our agenda before we'll get to the audit, and that's um, re revisiting providing elected official salary guidance to the Board of Selectmen. And everybody was here at our last meeting where this was a, an item on our agenda, and um, at that time, there was a little bit of confusion. We didn't have all the documents in front of us with respect to the study that was done in 2018 regarding the first selectman salary. And since that time, uh, Mark distributed the salary grid that was adopted or at least um, used as a reference tool in 2018. And um, Jim also um, forwarded the uh, survey of first selectman salaries of towns um, approximately of our size. And so we, we now have that information. I, I would like to ask Mark just kind of walk us through the thinking in 2018. But, but before I do that, uh, just to remind you, we did take action at the 2011 meeting. And what we did was um, to add a seventh term step to the salary grid, which was an increase of $1,000 over the, the prior step. Um, and at that time, there was, <coughs> Uh, there were several members of the board that weren't necessarily comfortable with that action given the performance and the dedication of our first selectman, which, which was universally recognized across the, uh, the membership of the board, as well as the public that was here. We kind of heard it from, from Mr. Pitney, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we thought we'd revisit it right away before we get too much further in the, in the, the budget season. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mark. Huh. Yeah, so back in, well, so it might have even started in the fall of uh, 17, but what we did from a study perspective, and, and this arose from a similar conversation way back then, which was uh, Jim's value to the town and his, <coughs> um, his repeated uh, re-election uh, into the position. Um, but we, we wanted to do a market study and, and get some data, get the facts, and then make uh, an informed determination as to what we should do with the salary grid. So. We looked at similar towns, uh, gathered the salary data. We looked at the median, the average salary. Uh, I think the median at the time was about 72,000. Uh, midpoint, the average was about 70. Um, I don't recall um, what, what the first electment salary was at the time relative to that, but we viewed it um, as, as under market relative to the, the salary data and the number of terms. Um, that, that are served uh, given that the experience. And so similar to um, the education contracts where there's both a, a base and then some steps um, that recognize both experience and tenure uh, in a role or years of service. I shouldn't say tenure, it's not, uh, it's not something that's earned and permanent. Um, so we decided to set a base that was appropriate relative to market. I think it was just a hair under market um, started off at 70, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that was below the median salary, uh, closer to the average. <clears throat> and then what we said was we would adjust that base year to year as appropriate for uh, cost of living, et cetera. And we would recognize um, additional terms in office consecutive um, and add 2,000 uh, per term of experience and we went up to a fifth term. So the 70,000 plus a second term of two, third, fourth, fifth, uh, brought the max up to 78,000. Um, Jim in, uh, is in his seventh term, the first election was in his seventh term at the time, uh, at this time. And that's where we got into discussion at the last meeting. Um, like Natalie said, we, we voted on a seventh term, I think we skipped over a sixth term in terms of the grid not having the, the data with us or the document at the time. But anyway, that was the, uh, that was the point of the study was to establish a, a market value and recognize um, 
sort of length of service and experience in the job. Any questions? I don't know. I appreciate half of, you, half of you were here. You and I worked on it together. Right. I, I appreciate uh, both Jim and you getting getting all that information to, together. So so we had that over over the past two weeks. Anything I left out? And uh, no, not at all. But what I'd like to just propose is to to move the base by by, by two grand and to to um, um, and to eliminate the uh, the thousand dollars that we talked about last time. Yeah. Since I didn't hear that as a motion, I'll I'll, I'll respond. Well, um, you because see, I, I think we, I think relative to the base, um, if we're going to rebase. Yeah, we should go back and do a market study to rebase. But if we want to adjust uh, based on years of service, I think that's more appropriate until we understand what adjustment is required or not required to the base. Um, I'll have to check. I didn't check the minutes from last year, but okay. we might have moved the base already once. Yeah, we did. We moved it for 71. Right. right. So I think we should move. OK. So what are you suggesting, Mark? Um, Consistent with I think with the thinking last uh, meeting is that we if we want to recognize experience and service okay. um, and reelection then we add terms. Okay. What I'm concerned about is the base being. I mean, Jim is. Not, I said this two years ago. Jim is not going to be here for the rest of his life. Maybe he will be, but but <laughs> but but. but, but, but but we need to continue to, to move up that base. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, that's, that, that, that's what you, to attract people. That's how come I'm going after it. And I, and I think once you have eight steps, how many, seven steps in it? Five. Five, whoa, okay. Um, you know, is plenty. And that's how come I'd like to go to the base and go to, I thought it was 72 and go to 74. So it's not at 71. <coughs> 71, then go to 73, and then go t t t all the way up. So I guess my question is, are, how are we going to handle this in subsequent years? Are we going to run the same issue? Right. As soon as we hit a CPI year, we're, you're at the maximum step. I mean, it's, it's you know, we're the, we're the teachers top out after the 10th step, too. I mean, it's, you get your, right. You're in your, you're in your market paid well-experienced role, and um, well, that doesn't that just I, bump him up if, if we bump that up? A grand oh yeah, no, all that ripple through. Yeah. I think right. Exactly. Salivar's thinking, what happens next year and the year after? Right. If, <coughs> if, if for example, the first electman's still here, and now we're on eighth and ninth term, and we'll still be looking at, I don't know, between the probably, base up. <laughs> probably likely it's zero to three percent. Mm. Um, so. Does it make sense to then adopt a policy that can be consistent year over year? Yeah, that was this. So, yeah. well, <laughs> right. yeah. was, okay, true, true. And we, we tried. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, well, because we haven't done another study, okay. but I'm not sure this is off market yet. Um, you know, we'll approach and based on sort of the thinking here so far, which is let's add two grand a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we could be the market leader in salary across all the towns in Connecticut. If that's what we want to do. Uh, we could. I just don't. Something's think. going to happen here in, you know, looking forward here. There's only f uh, 5,400 people in town, you know, in order to be the first selectman. And you have to be able to, to attract. That's, that's where my, my whole, whole deal is. That's, that, that, that's when I'm. Well, I guess my. I sort of take the other okay. flip side of that is there are only 5,400 people in town, and to it, I'm not sure we really attract someone by a, the difference between a $75,000 and $80,000 base salary. My concern is is that we end up with someone who is going to work part time um, in the role and doesn't have the interest or dedication or time or whatever. Um, sometimes like lawyers will take a job like this thinking it's easy just to make a little extra money or to get health insurance benefits. And then we're, so you know, the flip side of saying we're gonna attract somebody by going up two grand is, yeah, we can, maybe we attract somebody we don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, and so maybe it's safer, especially 
if we're if Mark's well, I think what Mark is saying is that the base salary should be adjusted based on an analysis of comparable towns. I think we're all yeah, talking I mean, the I, same thing. Well, we just no, need to no, figure no. out how well, to get there. Uh, correct. And so um, right. Natalie articulated my, my viewpoint, which is, um, and I come from a reward for performance environment, and if someone's getting reelected and not voted out, then therein is, you know, lies the performance rewards, which you put into the step, you put it into the base, and you could just, I mean, you make this $150,000, and I think you'll get a, lot, a bigger slate of candidates next year. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's... No, I did take it to extreme for, for a purpose of example, but the, the oh, higher, here's, here's your if you go outside of market, right, I think you need to keep this in market. Yeah. And, and yes, I mean, we all can look at the role and. So what are you proposing? And, uh, I'll leave it, I'll leave it to you guys. I've, I've got two comments. Um, yeah. This, the study was done in March, 2018. It's unlikely that a lot would have occurred between then and now. That would significantly change the market conditions for this. Uh, number two is uh, consistent with um, Oliver's point in the last time. Um, if we're advising the Board of Ed and the uh, general government for a 2% increase, then it's to be consistent with that, we could raise the, um, all the existing salaries by $1,500, which is pretty close to the 2% uh, guidance that we gave to both the Board of Education and uh, the general government. So increase the base wage and all the way up to set the, the ladder by $1,500. I know you were suggesting another $2,000. I was just looking at it over the weekend, that's all. And I was saying, let's make this easy and let's not drag this out. And, and just by doing it, but I should have known that it, that, that we, that, that, that something, that, that nothing since, since happens here. Since you're kind of chairing this, can I, can I be recognized? <laughs> Um, given now, I, I thank you for explaining because I wasn't here in 2018 and I didn't really understand where things are coming from. But based on what you said and the understanding of um, you know, base salary being tied to the market um, and the, the reward for being reelected and doing a great job, I think it makes more sense to leave the base salary, well, actually return the base salary to where it was, you know, rescind our action at our last meeting. We didn't, we didn't touch base. I think we added a No, we added a thousand. Oh, that's right. I'm which, sorry. I'm which sorry. We, You're which right. no one remembered what we okay. did. Well, I would, I would suggest then that, that really what I would be more comfortable with and I think would be consistent with what was done in 2018 to the greatest extent would be to revise the grid and add um, a six-term $2,000 step and then a seven-term 2,000 step. Okay. And that, and then for budget purposes, Jim would be budgeting at the seventh term step. Okay. So that can I make that motion since you're chairing the meeting? I'll second that. Yes. All right. We got discussion. So does that mean what for? He has a two or three or four thousand dollar raise at this point. Two. Because you're doing. That's a three thousand. You're doing a uh, two thousand. For the sixth step, which we only did one thousand last year, right, and then so another be, two thousand, so it'll be a three thousand dollar raise. 3, you're talking about yes, yes, and to the extent that seems like a lot for some people, I would say I think maybe we short. We didn't do enough last year. I said if we do adopt this, then we definitely need to look at. Um, what you were talking about earlier, what the <clears throat> salaries are on the other municipals for next year. Yeah, I think so. It's at the base is at 71. That would put the fifth step at 79. You're right. talking about four, goes to 83. And Woodbridge is at 85 from two years ago, Essex was at 85, Durham 86. Uh, some of the other towns, Chester, 68. So, I mean, yeah, it's still within the range of... Um, in the mean? No, it's still within the range of high and low. Right. Yeah. Well, Har Harlington, you look at them, they're 66. Mm-hmm. And that's about the same population we have. Well, these all were. Yeah. 
And maybe <coughs> whoever the chair is next year, um, but maybe that would be the rationale in the non in the year not following the municipal election, we would have that revised yeah. because that would be the COLA year right, right. where we would advise revise the base salary. That makes sense. Okay. I like that. So that'd be homework for us to do. Yeah, did you just volunteer, Dave? Sure. Okay, great. Jim loves putting that yeah. together. He has he has the book. Salary yeah. review. Question for discussion. Um, being that Jim is already in his seventh term, are we, is our desire that this be effective July 1 within his fiscal year or some other time? I think we should be it's clear good, about that. It's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. I was I thinking mean, that because he's not elected until November. Yeah, but at the, like, if we said it's effective during this meeting, then the salary could go up tomorrow, right? And I just, we should be clear about what our intent is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, and what I was thinking is you're not elected till November. Exactly. It's, it's always effective July 1. The direction July that November. you're giving yeah, is for July 1. July 1, July 1 of this year? So, uh, you would have to yeah, do something different to yeah, change it now. Right. It's okay. always, the motion is for July 1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we add that to the motion? That this would be effective July 1. The, it would be the, the um, guidance to the Board of Selectmen would be to budget the first Selectman salary for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Um, to include the two steps. To include the, additionals, uh, the addition of two new steps, a sixth term and a seventh term step. So he would be... I hesitate to say the exact number. Um, I think it's 71 off the base, so that it's 79 two. we added two, I think it's 83. So it would be a clean 83. Mm -hmm. with, with no change mm -hmm. at this time, it would all be, 83 would be effective July 1. And that's a motion, and you want me to second it then, or did we, we already had the motion on the floor. Second, we I second, I think the motion was clarified, and I don't know if the motion needs to include right. a no, I guess that, that, that changes it, that overrides the other. You know, Kelly, if you could include, though, in the motion that with the Board of Finance intends to review the base salaries prior to... The opposite year. I thought we were going to do it the opposite. The... Next year. Next year, yeah. Right. At the and beginning of 2021. And on odd years from now on. Well, I, I mean, maybe that's a policy that doesn't need to go in a motion. Right. Okay. I was right. just thinking yeah. this would be a reminder, but yeah. But that's that's, that's right. I'm, what I'm saying is that on the odd years, we look at I guess the better thing to do would be just to update the memo. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll update the salary grid. The salary grid memo, yeah. I was going to ask you if you could do that, please. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 It's one, two, three, four. All those against? Aye. 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 Lee and Jim against? Okay. All right. Um, then our next item is the audit report presentation. And we'll invite the town's auditor to present. Who would you like me? Um, Wherever you're comfortable. You want to? Where's the chair? Yeah, yeah. Certainly, you don't need to. Wherever you're comfortable. Will be visible from there. Anybody watch Jim? Is he visible on the TV from yes. there? Okay, thank you. Or maybe there's, maybe we're not on TV. It might just be the wide shot. I'll let you know. Right, I'll wait for Jim to get back. <coughs> we're starting. Um, but again, just as far as introductions, uh, my name is Mike Van Deventer. I'm a partner at Mahoney Sable, uh, ultimately responsible for overseeing the audit and uh, will be issuing the reports uh, on behalf of the firm. Um, so I will be going through a presentation that will cover uh, our audit reports, um, the scope of work. Uh, I'll provide some overall financial highlights uh, and then I'll make my required communications. I uh, don't typically go through the actual financial statements and the single audit in detail, uh, but certainly to the extent you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to uh, answer those at any point in time. So. Okay. And, and Mike, just so you know, the, the audience is um, Board of Education members and, and staff. 
So um, we're grateful that, that you all were able to come. And I just have a quick question. So it makes sense that you have the reconciliation, all that, it's all done with the Board of Education. Everything's been reconciled with the Board of Ed? So it's been the, uh, in order to be in the audit, or am I mistaken? Correct, and I'll go. I'll go through that as, okay. as part of the communication. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if I can jump into the presentation, uh, if we can go to slide two as far as the scope of work. Uh, again, we did perform an audit of the town's financial statements, and we performed that audit in accordance with both the auditing standards issued by the AICPA, as well as the government auditing standards issued by the Government Accountability Office. Uh, in addition, based on the level of uh, funding that was received from the state, we did also perform a state single audit in accordance with the State Single Audit Act. Um, I do want to point out that the town did not meet the threshold for having a federal single audit this year. Uh, that threshold is 750000 and the uh, town had spent approximately 567000 in uh, in federal awards. So you are below that uh, that threshold. Uh, in addition, we also um, perform an agreed upon procedures on the end of school year reports. Uh, those procedures are required by the State of Connecticut Department of Education. Uh, we have not finalized those procedures as of yet. Uh, typically, we will complete the actual financial statement audit, uh, and then we will perform uh, those procedures once the uh, financial statement audit is done. So again, we expect to finalize those procedures uh, by the end of, of March. Just curious, um, do you see most of your clients or the minority of clients spend, have a federal audit? Um, actually, since they raised the threshold to 750000 unless you have a significant um, you know, federal highway project uh, or um, oh, I got you. Okay. You know, something along those lines, typically the education grants will, will accumulate below the 750000 so you really typically need something on the town side to, to kind of put you over okay. the so educate. Yeah, some of the larger uh, municipalities will, will trigger that requirement, but uh, a lot of the smaller municipalities now fall below that threshold. <coughs> what was your address for? Threshold. The old threshold was 500000 okay. yep. uh, In addition to those audit services, uh, we do also perform some non-audit services on behalf of the town. Again, we do assist in the preparation of the financial statements as well as the schedule of state financial assistance and related notes. Uh, we also assist in converting your governmental fund financial statements to your government-wide financial statements. Um, and then in addition for the town of East Grand, we also assist in the preparation of some of your trial balances for several of your uh, smaller special revenue and fiduciary funds um, since they are not currently on an accounting system. Um, and essentially in order for uh, the firm to be independent of the town, uh, management is required to take responsibility for these services. Um, and again, Kelly and her role as the treasurer will uh, accept responsibility uh, for these services. Uh, as far as the audit reports, um, and again, we are substantially complete with the audit. Um, we'll probably put some final touches on it uh, tomorrow uh, with the intention of being able to file by, uh, by the end of the month. Um, again, we will be issuing unmodified clean opinions on your financial statements. Uh, our opinion does cover your uh, governmental activities. Uh, each of your major funds for the town, it was your general fund, your capital non-recurring fund, uh, your capital bond fund, uh, and that is a new fund for fiscal year 2019 uh, to track your uh, capital uh, authorizations that will be, uh, be bonded by the town. Uh, in addition to your school open choice fund, uh, and then we do also issue an opinion on what's considered to be the aggregate remaining fund information. And so that includes all of your non-major governmental funds, your pension and private purpose trust funds, and your agency funds. Uh, and each of your funds are detailed out in the uh, other supplemental information included in the financial statements. Uh, again, our opinion does provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from a material misstatement, whether due to error or fraud and that they've been prepared in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. Um, in addition, uh, we are required to issue a report on compliance and on internal control over financial reporting. Um, it's important to point out in this report, we don't actually express an opinion on your compliance with laws or regulations or on the effectiveness of your internal control structure. 
Uh, to the extent we identify what we consider to be a material non-compliance with a law or regulation or material weakness or significant deficiency in your internal control structure, uh, we're required to include it in this report. Okay? So again, we don't necessarily design our procedures to test the operating effectiveness uh, of your compliance or your internal controls. Um, so we did not report any material non-compliance of laws and regulations. Um, we did not report any material weaknesses in your internal control or financial reporting. Um, if we flip to the next slide, um, we did report or we will be reporting a, a significant deficiency in your internal control or financial reporting uh, and that was related to uh, the fact that the school district's account of records, accounting records were not fully reconciled with the records of the, uh, the town treasurer. Um, so again, from a reporting perspective, as an auditor, we have three levels of findings. We have material weaknesses, um, which means that you basically do not have controls in place to either identify or detect a material misstatement in a timely manner. Um, a significant deficiency is considered to be a uh, internal control deficiency that is less severe than a material weakness, but important enough to merit the attention of those charged with governance. Um, so that's the, the level of the finding that uh, we viewed this, this reconciliation issue. Um, ultimately, the, the reconciliation issues between the town and the Board of Ed did result in delays in the town treasurer closing out the general fund and reconciling the general fund operating cash account. Um, the reconciliation also resulted in uh, what I'll refer to as an unreconciled adjustment to the education expenditures reported in the general fund in the amount of about 47000 uh, and that was ultimately in order, um, recorded in order to balance the general fund operating bank account and the other amounts that are reported as due to due from other educational funds. All right. um, so. As, as a result of this finding, the school district, uh, in collaboration with the town, will have to file a corrective action plan uh, with the Office of Policy and Management um, that basically states whether or not they agree with the finding and then what are the steps that they will be taking to, to address the finding. Uh, in addition, as a result of the, the finding that will be issued, uh, from an audit perspective, we'll be required to follow up on it in connection with the next year's audit and then report specifically on that finding. Um, so again, I do realize that the, you know, the Board of Finance was aware of this issue, um, so again, uh, this is how it was uh, uh, communicated as part of the audit process. Uh, as far as a recommendation goes, um, again, I, I recommend that the school district and the town really develop a formal reconciliation process uh, to ensure that they are being reconciled uh, to, uh, accurately and timely. Um, that process should document specifically which reports and supporting documentation uh, should be provided by the school district to the town treasurer. Uh, in addition, uh, it is important to incorporate in that process any adjustments that the Board of Ed uh, may, may make to their uh, information throughout the month uh, that is a change in the information that was previously provided to the town treasurer. Okay. Um, so I know historically the town has kind of had a process to be able to reconcile. Um, so, you know, certainly I would look at that process, but then I would also look to kind of, again, formalize that process in terms of documenting specifically what reports and how often uh, we're, we're reconciling. Any questions as far as that finding goes? So what happened with the 47610? It just got pushed aside or how does that? It did. It, it got recognized as an additional expenditure in the Board of Education line. There was a bottom line? Okay. Yeah. What, what was I can't specifically called? tell you which transaction okay. that related to. All right. Um, at the end of the day, especially with the town's accounting system, uh, which is not fully integrated, um, ultimately we compile a lot of the information in terms of the education grants as separate funds. Uh, you have the general fund, so there are amounts that are kind of due to from those funds. So that adjustment was ultimately needed to reconcile the bank account mm -hmm. with the education expenditures. Uh, so there was a variance between uh, those expenditure reports. Yep. Is there a due date for that corrective action plan you mentioned? Uh, typically it's, um, OPM will look for it within 30 days after the issuance of the audit. Mm -hmm. And it's a responsibility of the uh, 
the town or the Board of Ed? Too? So this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, a good if, if it's specific to the Board of Ed, typically it would be the superintendent that would sign off on the corrective action plan. Um, this does involve the town as well. Um, so it could be either a collaborative response or it could be probably just from the superintendent. So would, would your recommendation be going forward to have a system of both the Board of Ed and the town to have one system that they'll work on together? You know, computer system or Yeah, so I think one whatever. of the recommendations um, that we've kind of made is to kind of evaluate the accounting system. Um, I know the town has, you know, been, has this process in place that they've utilized for a number of years that, you know, employees are comfortable using. Um, yeah, at some point in time, uh, you know, the town will probably need to transition to a new accounting system. Uh, and certainly integrating with the Board of Education would be Makes the sense. way to go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sooner than later. Yep. There's, I mean, there's no requirement on time. Um, but again, it, it, if, if your manual controls that are in place work, um, then again, that's kind of up to the board and management to decide when you want to transition to a new accounting system. Um, again, this has never been an issue really, I think, you know, prior to the last couple of years. Right. Um, so is the solution updating your system and integrating? Yes. Um, but there are other, you know, more costs. Uh, well, that wouldn't necessarily be the fix. I think it's process, right? Yeah. That, yeah. that needs to be adjusted. Whether or not we buy new software right. but might be helpful in that. In, in, we'll reduce in the, the manual reconciliation. Yeah. Well, typically, yeah. we'll reduce the manual reconciliation. That's We're always fine. looking for shared services. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But that recommendation was made last year um, by your firm mm -hmm. and the year before about doing it. So this will be the third third time you're, you're up here, mm -hmm. you know, talking about it. Um, will that have any impact on it uh, through the corrective action? No. By, by them looking at it and saying, hey, we told you two times before this, and now this happened. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a recommendation, okay. but it, it's not a requirement. Okay. Right. Just, yeah. So as a board and management, you would have to evaluate whether you know or not. What to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, based, uh, based on what, you, you, what you've seen with the non-reconciliation, how robust would you, see that pro would you say that process is? Um, you know, historically, I think it was kind of a, more of an informal process in terms of information flow. Um, so again, what I would be looking for is, you know, more of a detailed, um, you know, reconciliation where the actual reports get filed with the reconciliation so that, again, you have all that supporting documentation right there. Yeah, there's probably years of familiarity with the personnel that was in place. You change personnel out, and there's not a recipe of ingredients, mm -hmm. with standard reports, standard products, right. standard journal entries that occur. So, right. um, I think I offered, you know, I offered up to Kelly to, you know, meet with Kelly and Ray and kind of go through that process um, and kind of give my thoughts on it. Because again, you know, Kelly's been used to, you know, what information she had been provided previously that had always right. worked, but maybe there's, you know, a way to you know, formalize that process or make it a little bit more robust. Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, in connection with the state single audit, we issue a report on compliance and on internal control at the state financial assistance level. Uh, and again, here we do actually express an opinion on your compliance with your major state programs. Uh, for fiscal year 2019, your total state financial assistance expended was about 3.3 million. Uh, of that, about 1.8 million was considered non-exempt and subject to our uh, compliance testing. Uh, your major programs were was the uh, were the Open Choice Program, uh, the Municipal Grant and Aid Program, and then the uh, Town Aid Group grants. Uh, in each of those grants, the primary compliance requirement that we are testing is allowable costs. Um, and again, we are issuing unmodified clean, clean opinion on your compliance over those programs. I um, mean, and you're charging allowable costs to those grants. Uh, and again, we're not reporting any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses over your grant compliance. Uh, so that is a clean report. All right, this next session goes over your uh, financial highlights. Um, and again, I know you haven't had uh, time to really review the financial statements. 
Um, but again, this includes uh, information that I thought would be beneficial to, to the board. Uh, certainly, uh, any issues that I identified as part of the audit from a financial perspective, I would include it in these uh, financial highlights. Uh, the first slide goes over your general fund budgetary highlights. Uh, your final budget did provide for the use of fund balance of about 617000 uh, and that consisted of a use of fund balance in the amount of about 556000 to balance your original budget, uh, and then you did have some additional appropriations of about 62000 uh, Your actual change in fund balance was an increase of 308000 uh, so that did result in an overall favorable budgetary variance of about 925000 uh, so again, you plan to use 617, you returned uh, 308,000, there's your favorable variance of about 925,000. Uh, your revenues and other financing sources were about 724,000 more than budgeted, and that really related to favorable variances on property tax collections, uh, your education cost sharing funds, uh, building permit fees, as well as uh, interest income. Uh, and then overall, your expenditures were about 201000 less than budget. Uh, and again, no budgetary noncompliance issues were identified uh, as a result of all. Uh, your next slide goes over your governmental fund financial statement highlights. Um, and again, your combined ending fund balances as of year end totaled about $3.9 million. Uh, and that was a decrease of about $3 million from the prior year. Um, that decrease was really driven by your capital outlays on your uh, bonded projects. Um, overall, your fund balances, uh, you have about $4.4 million in your general fund, uh, which was an increase of about $195,000. Uh, of that $4.4 million, $3.7 million was considered unassigned, and that represents about 16.3% or 1.95 months of your uh, fiscal 2019 budgetary expenditure appropriations. Um, again, the, the guidance that's put out by the uh, GFOA is that uh, all governments, regardless of size, maintain about two months of reserves on hand. Uh, so that's around 17%. So you are right around that, that threshold. Uh, and again, as far as your general fund fund balance, you did have about 363,000 uh, that had been assigned for use in your fiscal year 2020 budget. Uh, your capital non-recurring fund has a fund balance of about uh, 1.2 million, uh, and that was a decrease of about 244,000 from the prior year. And again, those amounts are restricted, committed, or assigned for capital purposes. Uh, and there are, there is a schedule of um, detailed uh, capital projects that are included as other supplemental information in your financial statements. Uh, your capital bond fund is reporting a deficit of about 2.9 million. Again, that is what drove your overall decrease from the prior year. Uh, again, that is a temporary <coughs> deficit associated with your authorized capital projects that will be funded by uh, long-term debt and grant reimbursements. Um, and again, we did report the subsequent event of the ban issuance that occurred uh, subsequent to year end in the financial statements. Uh, the Open Choice Fund has a fund balance of about 532000 uh, and that was an increase of about 26000 from the prior year. And again, those amounts are restricted for education. And then all of your other funds had a combined ending fund balance of about 567000 uh, which was a decrease of about 168000 from the prior year. Um, you are reporting a deficit fund balance of about 225000 in your sewer use fund. Uh, that was an increase in the deficit from the prior year of about 177,000. Um, typically in the past, uh, that deficit uh, would be covered by uh, unavailable revenues, the bills that would go out in October. Um, in this case, your unavailable sewer revenues totaled about 147,000. Uh, so when you look at it kind of on a full accrual basis of accounting, you, you're reporting of a deficit of about 78,000. Um, so again, the plan, uh, the recommendation is, is for a plan to be in place to uh, ultimately address that, that deficit. And then this next section uh, includes all of our required communications. Um, the first uh, item here talks about our responsibility under our auditing standards. Again, although we do assist in the preparation of the financial statements, they are the responsibility of management. Uh, so all of the information that has been included in the financial statements did come from management. Uh, it is our responsibility to perform our audit procedures and then issue our reports uh, on that information. 
Uh, in terms of the plan scope and timing the audit, uh, again, there was no changes in the overall scope of work that was performed. Uh, again, the timing of the audit was delayed, uh, resulting in the need for two 30-day extensions from uh, OPM. And again, additional time was needed to obtain uh, the required actuarial evaluation and disclosure reports for other post-employment benefits that are provided by the school district. Uh, and then addition, additional time was also needed to uh, finalize the reconciliation of the school district's account of records to, uh, to the town treasurer. Uh, in terms of significant audit findings, uh, we do review your accounting policies and practices. Uh, again, no significant changes from prior years. Uh, the one item I will point out is that the town was required to implement a new GASB standard, uh, GASB statement number 88, certain disclosures related to debt. Um, again, did not have a significant impact on your accounting for debt, it just modified a little bit of the disclosures related to your debt. Uh, we do uh, review significant estimates and judgments that are involved in determining some of your financial statement amounts. Uh, those estimates consist of estimated useful lives that are assigned to capital assets. Uh, and that is utilized to calculate depreciation expense in your government-wide financial statements, as well as the discount rates that are utilized to determine your uh, total OPEB liability for the school district. Um, and again, those estimates were deemed to be uh, reasonable. Um, in terms of difficulties encountered in performing the audit, um, really, other than the, the delays related to the reconciliation between the Board of Ed and the, and the town, um, you know, we didn't have any other significant difficulties uh, encountered in performing the audit. Um, we had no uncorrected misstatements. Uh, so again, if we identified an adjustment as part of our audit work and we proposed to management and they did not want to report it, we're required to communicate that to you. Uh, happy to report that there were no disagreements with management. Uh, we will be obtaining a management representation letter. I won't be including anything unique in there that I would be required to inform you of. Um, and again, we're not aware of any consultations with, uh, with any other independent accountants. Uh, and then in terms of other matters, um, you know, as far as recommendations go, uh, both of these are kind of continuation from, from prior years. Um, so again, we do recommend that the town consider evaluating its, its current accounting systems um, and then also uh, recommend maintaining all, all of your funds in the accounting uh, system. Um, so again, None of these are requirements, um, but again, at some point in time, um, you know, it would probably make sense to uh, implement a new accounting system, um, and uh, that may help with efficiencies, uh, as well as some of your both internal and external reporting requirements. Okay. With that, I'll open it up to any questions that anybody might have. Cybersecurity seems to be a more and more important issue. What would you say about uh, our methods and its uh, uh, vulnerability to cyber hacking and cyber? What's your thoughts on? So yes, I mean cybersecurity is uh, certainly an issue um, for uh, every entity. Um, but specifically, uh, as of late, governments have been specifically targeted as, as well. Um, I know I've had discussions with, with Jim about cybersecurity, and you've actually had an we had a study. You had a study done. Um, and so, you know, from that perspective, from a board's perspective, you know, you do want to kind of challenge management to understand, you know, what are we doing to address the cybersecurity risks? Um, you know, do we have the disaster recovery plans in place to, to kind of mitigate those risks? Uh, and that's something that is going to be ever, you know, changing in terms of um, the different types of, of hacks that can occur. Um, so again, um, you know, the recommendation from, from our perspective, what I typically recommend is that you do have an external uh, assessment done of your IT environment, specifically related to cybersecurity. Uh, so I know that's something that you've done. Uh, so you know, really you should be kind of just kind of following up on that to making sure that, you, again, you're continuing to address kind of the latest risks that are out there. Question. I, I'm a big proponent of the accounting system modernization, but mm -hmm. just to be clear, all the manual stuff and the, and the uh, other 
work you perform preparing trial balances so they're in good form and all that stuff that management owns N none of that related to the issues of the reconciliation right i mean the, no. those fund balances those are yeah those so are they're separate and distinct separate i think that the accounting system upgrade will be welcome in my opinion um it will certainly help it right. might be part of the remediation plan but it wasn't connected to this recommendation that's been a perennial recommendation for a few years Agreed. That's accurate. I guess my questions um, relate specifically to the, the problems with the reconciliation of the Board of Ed. And I, I'll start with this corrective action plan that needs to be submitted within 30 days. Is that something that we have the in-house capability to do with consulting with you? Or are so you not involved at all? How so typically, the, the auditor would not be involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, typically, you would develop your own corrective action plan, um, and then I would look at it, and certainly I could provide comments uh, on the corrective action plan. Um, but you know, I'd be happy to you know have the discussion in terms of you know, what are some of the things that you might need to consider in responding. So, so we would need to file a report within thirty days to office of office policy and management. Correct. Right. What types of things are they looking for? Specifics? They, they want to know who, who is taking responsibility for the finding and what is basically the plan and timeline for you know, completing it. Is this something that you, you know, feel that you can correct in the, in the next reporting period, or is it something that's going to be more long term? So they're looking for very specific by December of to, uh, 2020 will be able to have such and such done. And right, or we intend, yeah, I mean, you know, we right. intend okay. to have this in place by okay. this date. Right. Okay. Um, and again, that will be kind of revisited as part of your next, you know, reporting period. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like, because that, that's the second piece of it, is, is have documenting the process. If, if we're staying with what we've historically done, it's a matter of formalizing it in writing, and that probably would be an attachment to what gets submitted to OPM in the next 30 days. Right. right. So, you know, typically, you know, I'm not sure if you can get all of that done within the next 30 days. So it can be kind of an evolving document. So you would file your initial corrective action plan basically saying, do we agree or disagree? And, and this, is the, you know, this is what we're going to do initially. Mm -hmm. And then you may follow up with them if, you know, if once you've actually executed or completed it. Mm -hmm. It's a summary of their project plan and timeline Correct. to implement new controls. They, we don't have to file all the new procedures and documentation and stuff. Yeah. And who's going to be doing that? You said it was kind of a joint effort between the Board of Ed and... The so I think, Ray, I think you were going to kind of... <clears throat> you were going to spearhead it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, but certainly, you know, there, there has to be some consideration from the oh, town perspective. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Is it a um, mailing kind of uh, thing? It doesn't require in-person uh, presentation testimony or something? In front Not of at all. Okay. Because I know if you go beyond the mm. February 28th, you've got to go stand before and ask for an extension on an audit, right? I mean, I think there's an explanation. No? No. No. Typically, um, typically <laughs> in person something required with OPM. If yeah. Sure. yeah. And they can call you in front of their advisory um, commission. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which, you know, it depends on what the reason for your um, delay in filing is. Um, so again, something like this, you know, you'll okay. want to make sure you're addressing it, but it's not I would be overly concerned about it. Approval of uh, Board of Ed, Suckman, um, Finance? It doesn't have to. No, I mean, it, it can generally just come from management. Okay. I mean, really, management should be informing the board what they're doing to address it. The Board of Ed or the Board of Finance? Both the Board of Ed and the Board of Finance. Okay. Uh, but I don't think it's anything that you need to accept or approve. Okay. I'm, just, yeah. I'm thinking about our meetings and things that are coming up because that's, right. that's all I was thinking. I mean, in general, you want to be kind of like OPM as well in terms of an oversight perspective. So, mm -hmm. are we evaluating, you know, that management is addressing the issue? So, so to make a point of it, so OPM won't call us into the principal's office. They will not call you into the principal's <laughs> office. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and really, what what we'll see would be just to get copied on what gets submitted. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good. 
And that's due in 30 days from? Yeah, typically that's the timeline that they from they will request. From when we issue the audit report. Which is? Which will probably the be tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so that's what I'm, okay. I guess I'm getting. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. 26th. Okay. And as um, Ray is going to spearhead this, but you, you'll be in touch with Jim and Kelly? Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. We don't do it in the silo. Does anybody else on the board have a question? No. no. Sure. Um, that since this is a draft, is there any things that you were proposing that might change? Any specific line items, or is it maybe a reconciliation of the dollar amount that's still open with the board? Not so overall, I, I don't think there'll be any changes in numbers. It just might be kind of wordsmithing things. But again, once we release the final report, um, those get uploaded to the state and will be made available to, to the public. Uh, it's probably a question for management, which I could reserve, but um, interested in the, the final return amount from the Board of Ed. It's 96. No. 96 minus the 47. 96 minus the 47. So, okay. And I get just another management question for, for Jim, I think, down the road would be the plan for this, the sewer fund. Correct. The WPCA, which is the Board of Selectmen acting as the WPCA, is, uh, you know, has discussed this issue going forward uh, and uh, have, uh, will prior to the new fiscal year, come up with a new fee structure and a plan. And we certainly will make you aware of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Anybody else? No, I'm very appreciative of your time coming in. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Mike. And, and thank you to all the board members for coming. Really appreciate it. And, and to Kelly for her perseverance, too, on this yeah. project, with her other hat on. And we're in what year with you? Uh, this was our third year. Third year. Yeah. And we have. Right. We already have the numbers. See, here I am thinking about what you have to put in. <laughs> but you're ahead of me, right, Jim? No, but I'm, I'm standing next to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's, a, I, that's what I was thinking, is that I know we have a contract for another. Good. Thank you. Okay. Right. Again, if um, once you've had a chance to kind of look through the financial statements, if you have subsequent questions, I'd be happy to answer those. If uh, typical, I'll ask you to kind of filter them through, uh, through Kelly. But... That sounds great. All right. Okay, thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, our next item under new business was review and act upon the audit report that we just received. So um, we've reviewed. Does anybody have any more comments or questions? Maybe we've covered that in our in our prior item. I just just repeat the. I think the action items will be. First and foremost, within this 30-day period, to, to get the action corrective action plan to OPEB, and I understand the board of that or the staff at, at the school district will be taking the lead on that and um, involving the town, Kelly and Jim, as appropriate, and then um, giving the board of that in as well as the board of finance copies of what gets submitted. Um, the second item, and I think it'll be maybe part of that process, also will be formalizing the, the process going forward in writing of, of the reconciliation and how that's going to happen. Um, so I don't know if we want to give a specific time frame on that, but um, I think that's something that with the Board of Finance, will, I will want to see a copy of, of what the documentation is that, that everybody agrees on. Um, you know, things like how many days into the next month will um, the books be reconciled, that kind of thing. Um, I, in some ways, that maybe will be a dynamic um, Escalation document. Process, yeah. yeah. Review. As, as different things come up. And, um, Wouldn't that, that be part of the action plan? Mm -hmm. So we'll see that. Yeah. No, hopefully, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. But, I, but going forward, then, as uh, you know, if, if there is um, a movement toward a shared service type approach, okay. looking at accounting systems and things like that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep 
moving and changing. Okay. So that's it's a that's living document. The living document, yeah. And then the third item is, is what Jim just mentioned about the uh, the Board of Selectmen acting as the WPCA um, on the sewer. I think those were yeah. the takeaways that I got. I don't. Did anybody else have anything that we'll be looking for follow up from management on? Possibly a uh, report on the uh, cybersecurity. There was. Uh, you mentioned there was there was some activity there and the results from that. Is that sure? I mean we. Um, you have believe that now in the computer world that you know I mean it's changed it's, but it was 2018 we did the uh, we did the study uh, there was uh, um, I can certainly give you the executive summary that's, that's it is there a motion to adjourn I'll second that move to accept the financial statements but yeah. is it, it's in a draft form, so yeah, it should be a draft. I'll, I'll right. move that we accept the draft audited financial statements as presented tonight, February 24th, uh, which are not expected to change and be issued within the next couple of days. Second the motion. And, you, and you're comfortable, any discussion? And you're comfortable doing that without, I haven't even opened the cover. Yes. You're, okay, if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. <laughs> okay. It's a draft anyway. Right. It's a draft. Right. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I'm in the space. I, I thumped through it quickly. I think the presentation covered the issues that we're aware of coming into the audit. Mm -hmm. If Mike's issuing the opinion um, or his firm is issuing the opinion, so right. I'm comfortable accepting them. I will go through them in more detail, but um, there's not something we're going to find, hopefully, that I need to correct yeah. Mike on. Hopefully not going to jump out at you. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion that's been made and seconded to accept the financial statements as presented. Well, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> the, draft. the draft. The draft, right. That's, we'll that's where I hesitated. Yeah. Um, All oh, sorry. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to go home. Motion to go home. It's been made by Dave. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Our next meeting is the 17th. All those in favor? Oh, sorry. Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. How do you meeting? say it? The meeting is the 17th. <laughs> is the March 17th is our next meeting. I was just looking it up. Okay. Thank you, everyone.